Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we've got a review of a multimeter. Now you may recall um, a while back I reviewed the Anang 618C smart multimeter. I'll put a link up there for you to click on should you want to go and uh, refresh your memory on that video or maybe perhaps look at it for the first time. Now this meter I was actually reasonably pleased with. Um, it's did all the ranges okay but the thing that was probably missing um, most of all was the ability to measure current either AC or DC. Uh, I did however think that you know a nice clear display and just the kind of meter that you could keep in you know maybe your, your caravan or your, your motorhome or RV as you guys left to call it across the pond um, and certainly perfectly reasonable meter with a nice display for the price. Now one or two people ask me um, about the 620 uh, which is also one of Anang's smart meters and I thought it's maybe worth uh, getting one of those so here we have the 620A which is again billed as the smart multimeter. This one however um, also does AC and DC current. It's got a full screen display as you can see and I suspect that's a little bit of a, a nod towards um, towards the mobile phone fraternity. It's got a, a mobile phone feel about it. I guess that would appeal to some people. You don't need a display that large to display the information um, that it's going to record. However there are a couple of features on this large display that I quite like which I think would be quite handy for the um, the casual meter user or maybe for people who are unfamiliar with um, needing to swap over the, the probes. One of the things about the 618 was that the leads were captive so you can't change them. This one's got three different sockets to allow you to change ranges. So let's get this beastie on the bench and see how it looks. Okay here's the uh, Anang 620A and next to it just for comparison uh, the Cisco and 8C and you can see um, quite a similar size the Anang has got this uh, protective rubber boot on it and if you remove that there's a uh, compartment in the back to take two uh, AAA batteries. Uh, switch on you simply press there and you can see it starts up fairly quickly and um, there, there's obviously an internal temperature sensor because it, rec it records the temperature um, whether, you're, uh, whether you've got a thermocouple uh, plugged in or not. It comes with uh, a thermocouple and also a couple of um, leads of a quality that you might expect at a meter this price um, and as you can see um, enormous display. <laughs> um, one of the things I quite like about um, meters with a display like this is they have the ability to tell you uh, what needs to plug in where. Now if you're a seasoned multimeter user you're probably now thinking why do I need to know that and know exactly where they plug. But if you're a casual multimeter user who's thinking of just getting one of these to keep in the in the cupboard under the stairs or in your toolbox or something for the occasional use. It is sometimes quite handy to be reminded and the display does um, tell you here what uh, where you need to plug them in. Um, so uh, let's start with some of the more uh, obvious ranges and we've got um, this auto mode which is uh, it's good and bad because of what I've discovered is if you're a, a hobbyist and you want to um, put it onto say vaults or ohms um, it's very difficult to do that because the uh, auto setting wants to find it for you. Um, so let's uh, let's get a few um, capacitors for first of all and see how it gets on with capacitance. Okay I've got a selection of capacitors here just plugged into the breadforth for testing so what we can now do is move on to capacitance range so short presses there allow you to step through and eventually you get to capacitance there. Uh, one thing this meter hasn't got is a, a stand so I'm using the very high tech uh, coffee cup to, to hold it in position but hopefully you can um, see the display sufficiently well. So let's start with a really big capacitor. I've got a 4700 microfarad electrolytic here. Now to be honest it's quite old so we'll see what she makes of it. So it's thinking about it. Uh, 
so it's saying it's um, 5,200 microfarads or um, 5.2 um, millifarads. So we'll we'll check that out on uh, on another meter um, in a moment or two. Let's try this one here. This is um, supposed to be 220 microfarads again, in electrolytic. Yeah, so it's saying 249, so I should say for an electrolytic that's probably a reasonable result. This is a, a 1 microfarad, see how that is. Yep, yeah, 900 and, well, point, point 0.93 microfarads that's saying. Uh, we've got a 1 nanofarad here, well, this is obviously getting smaller, so... Sorry, a 10 nanofarad, I'm talking rubbish there. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty much bang on, 10 nanofarad. And then finally we've got 100p here, so quite a small one. And yeah, 10n, so sorry, 0.01n. So yeah, that's um, that's actually about right too. So what I'm just gonna do is start up my bench meter and just uh, check out what the big capacitor um, comes to on my bench um, meter, that was the 4700 microfarad one, this is using my East Tester ET3240 um, and actually that's struggling to give me a result, it's saying 5.26 millifarads, 5.26 and I believe that's pretty much what the Ainang was saying, this is quite an old capacitor so I'm not surprised it's not spot on. Um, East Benchmeter said 5.26 and the Anang says 5.23 so actually yeah it it's, um, takes it a moment or two to, to find it out but it is actually pretty good on capacitance so that's that's nice okay let's have a look at uh, resistance now and I'm not proposed to go through loads and loads of resistances but I am going to just be a little bit naughty and try it at extremes. For resistance we need to be on auto mode and if I just short the probes out you have to forgive the noise it's going to make but if I hold the probes together it pretty much settles at, at point 0.1 so that's the resistance of the leads I would imagine. Um, so I really have played devil's advocate here because this is a 0.1 ohm resistor and I wouldn't realistically expect using the two wire method to get an accurate result on here but uh, we do get something that's pretty reasonable if I now put that on forgive the beeping I'm sorry it will eventually settle at 0.2 and the leads shorted together are 0.1 so it's arguably reading that 0.1 ohm resistor correctly, which is quite surprising. Um, middle of the range here, let's have a look at this one. That's 120k, it's saying 119.7, so yeah, probably about right. And finally, I've got a beast of a, a resistor here. This is uh, in the mega ohm range. Uh, it's saying 8.05, it's supposed to be 8.3 mega ohms, this. Um, so yeah, just to give you some idea. And again, if I pop onto my uh, bench meter, if I can find the, the leads to do that, um, the bench meter makes, uh, let's put it on ohms, the bench meter makes this 8.3 to be about 8.06, so it's pretty close to that. 119.7 uh, was what the meter made of this and the bench meter is saying 119.73 and finally this 0.1 um, bench meter is saying 0 0.12 ohms that's in the two wire mode so actually that, that's pretty good on resistance I was asking a lot of it to measure at 0 0.1 and it's um, it's come up okay so a nice one Ainang ok I've moved on to uh, diode mode now. I've got a selection of diodes, germanium, silicon and a couple of LEDs, a red and a white. So uh, they all test out zero in the reverse bias condition, so they're all good diodes. So let's see how it gets on with forward bias voltage. It's saying 
0.47 for the germanium uh, the silicon 0.61 so yeah that's uh, what I'd expect the red LED just about 1.8 volts forward and the white quite a bit higher at 2.6 so yeah it does rather well with the, the diode so that's handy okay let's go a quick look at the uh, DC current um, I've got a uh, very ancient variable um, wire wound potentiometer actually um, and I've got it in series with uh, the ANANG 620A and also my bench meter the East Tester 3240 um, and they're a green to certainly to two decimal places without um, too much of an issue so as I um, decrease the resistance increase the current go up to about 500 milliamps something like that and again it's a green to within um, two or three milliamps so seems pretty reasonable let's um, keep up there and yeah certainly agreeing at about um, 0.79 milliamps uh, it does actually say maximum um, 10 amp for 10 seconds on the uh, uh, current measurement here so I'm not going to push it too far but certainly for electronics uh, being able to read fairly small um, in the milliamp range is clearly quite handy. I'm going to just uh, back the voltage off on the power supply and see how we get on below 100 milliamps. So there's, yep, yeah, it's still a green with the um, the bench meter, which is good. Let's go down a bit further and see what we get. Um, Yep, <laughs> still agreeing actually. Um, I'm at 0.2 volts now according to my bench power supply and uh, the meter just drops into auto mode there so at that point it kicks back in at about um, yeah, about 16 milliamps on, on DC current it, um, it starts to work again. So again you, you're back to this limitation of the auto mode. Uh, it has to have an amount of current before it starts detecting it which is um, almost certainly fine for for casual use it might you might struggle occasionally from an electronics point of view with that and obviously if you want to measure microamps which you may well do um, it doesn't have the facility for that so for really detailed electronic work it would struggle otherwise um, seems pretty reasonable Right, I'm going to try and set something up uh, for a bit of AC current now. That's not quite so easy, but we'll have a go. Okay, here we are with uh, AC current. And a couple of interesting things to note. The Kiwitz meter, which is usually pretty good, um, is picking up the fact that it's 50 hertz. I'm actually using a, an AC um, uh, power supply, sort of wall wart. It's... Um, provides about 17 volts AC open circuit and I've got it fed through a, a wire wound resistor again and uh, here we Kiwitz is saying just under 400 milliamps about 380 whereas the Anang's making it about four and a half if I now decrease the resistance and the current should rise we'll take it up to about 500 on the, the Kiwitz okay there's about 500 milliamps AC and ANAG saying about 590 so it's um, about 10% out there roughly and isn't picking up the frequency interestingly um, I'll just go up to about 0 0.7 that's about as much as this power supply I'll be happy providing um, it's getting resistors getting mighty warm like that there you are so about 0.6 amps and about saying about 0.7 on the uh, on the ANANG so it's less good on the uh, AC current but um, I've struggled a bit to set up a, a test for this but it gives you an idea anyway okay so again I'm back into uh, auto mode and this time we've got uh, AC volts and it's displaying um, 8 point uh, 6.2 volts there and it's remember it's supposed to be a 
2 RMS as it says there so it's saying 8.62 volts at about 50 Hertz I've got the output of my signal generator um, connected to the meter that's where I'm getting this AC voltage from I've also got my scope attached to the same source and I'm just going to take a, a screen grab of the scope um, which is saying uh, we have an RMS voltage of 8.6, 8.63 to be precise according to the scope at 50 Hz so it's pretty much um, bang on. I'm going to back the amplitude off now to 1.793 volts is what the meter is saying and the scope is saying about 1.8 so um, that's uh, again that's pretty good we're still at uh, 50 hertz 1.78 it's saying now so yeah very close again I'll um, show you a grab of the screen there and I'm going to carry on down now with the voltage to so you can see there suddenly it's now struggling to detect uh, the actual voltage there is about 0.3 RMS so it's now detecting 0 0.72 volts at about, well it's struggling a little bit with the frequency but it's hovering around the 50 hertz so it's not far off and the scope is saying uh, that's 0 0.714 volts as you can see there so yeah once it gets to 0 0.71 it's away I think the problem is in auto mode and you can't well I haven't found a way to take it out of auto mode to do this uh, it reaches a point where it's, it's not able to, to detect anymore so I'm going to wind the amplitude back up um, to let's say 8.6 volts um, on the meter and the scope is saying 8.65 so yeah that's pretty good you can see the screen there so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to advance the frequency initially to 100 Hz there and yeah it seems to be doing the frequency reasonably well so if I go up to 500 Hz same voltage um, sorry that's 1.5 kHz I was a bit keen with the knob there yeah it's still finding it okay let's just go up to 2 kHz so again yeah 2 kilohertz and I'll just quickly uh, show you the scope screen um, scope agrees that it's 2 kilohertz and we're still 8.35 volts um, scope saying it's about 8.96 now so it's starting to become slightly less accurate as the frequency increases um, let's try 3 kilohertz so again it's happy with 3 kilohertz as the frequency it's saying 6.9 and the scope as you can see saying um, about 8.8 .8 RMS so it's starting to um, deviate now with the increase in frequency let's try 4 kilohertz 4 kilohertz again frequency readouts okay it's saying 3.5 and uh, the scope is saying 4 kilohertz obviously but it's saying about 8.9 for the RMS voltage so it has deviated quite a way now so as the frequency increases the voltage reading begins to struggle um, and at 5 kilohertz um, which it's still reading it's uh, again continuing to drop down it's obviously away from the reading um, at 6 kilohertz uh, the scope says we've still got 8.81 volts RMS but um, the meter is now saying it's about a tenth of that so the accuracy drops off quite considerably not sure when how you'd use this um, I suspect the meter is going to be measuring AC volts at 50 or 60 Hertz most of the time so this is potentially a little bit academic and we'll just try 7 kilohertz and at 7 kilohertz it can no longer detect it if I go back to 6 kilohertz it actually still can't detect it I actually have to drop down to um, about 4 kilohertz before it'll pick up the fact that it's reading AC current again and that's that auto mode so on your normal um, 50-60 hertz and certainly 
up to two or three kilohertz it's um, it's pretty reasonable on, on AC volts. Okay final thing to look at here is temperature. I've got the thermocouple attached and if I just put it between my fingers you can see temperature starts to rise. Uh, you keep pushing the mode button until you get to temperature to, um, to get this reading and another tap here will give you Fahrenheit. So for all you folk over there who use still use Fahrenheit um, and a fair few people in the UK probably still understand Fahrenheit better than centigrade. I'm afraid I'm definitely a centigrade person. Um, but it also does a, a readout in Fahrenheit for you. And with the, the thermocouple unplugged, um, it would appear to default to the internal um, temperature sensor. I don't know how that would be affected by um, uh, by the meter getting hot, but. Um, yeah, there we go. And other other features to notice: it has a, a flashlight on the back and also a backlight on the display. Um, this is the kind of thing that uh, most of the time you probably wouldn't be too concerned about. Although uh, there are the odd occasion when that can come in handy. And um, I have been known to use my mobile phone as a torch on a couple of occasions to get me out of a mess. So it is the kind of thing that uh, would let you do that. So there is a button at the top there that. Um, allows you to uh, switch the light on. Oh, there we go, there's the flashlight and a long press should take it off again um, and it's not too bright in here today for you to see the, the backlight but there is also a, a backlight for the display too. Okay well that's a bit of an overview of the features of the Anang 620A smart multimeter. Um, overall impression is actually it's all right. It's probably ideal for people who are the occasional multimeter user. If you're a serious electronics hobbyist uh, the auto mode may be a bit of a problem because uh, it needs um, to know what's going on before it actually switches to the right mode and it would be handy to be able to override that. I've not found a way to do it yet. Um, if there is one then great maybe if, if you know how to do that perhaps put a, a comment down below. But uh, generally it's pretty good. I like the display. It's nice and clear. For old people like me it's handy to have nice big numbers that you can see easily. Um, and I it wouldn't discount the importance of that um, for people using it because I think it is quite important. But yeah, seems a nice, um, well-made meter. There's clearly relays clicking away inside it because um, I can hear the, the clicking when it's um, searching for its mode. I got it from Banggood. I paid uh, just over £16 and that was delivered from China. It took about a week to get here, which is pretty quick um, for, for Chinese to UK these these days so that's quite good. Um, it's 16 pounds it's very cheap indeed really for what it is um, so I've not got um, really too much to criticize that for. The uh, DC current range is fine the AC current range not quite so good but um, you know if you're not a, less, not a serious hobbyist you probably don't use those very often so yeah um, I think that's all right. Make a, a good addition to your, to your toolbox for the, the casual uh, meter user. So um, yeah, all right. Thanks very much for watching. Hope it's helped. Um, if you've liked the video, please click the thumbs up. If not, you can click the thumbs down. Either way, please consider subscribing. That would help me. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you on the next video.